you understand. Hey everybody, I'm Tony Jones, and welcome to the Tony Jones Show. Uh, it's not that people are willing to take the risk. It's just sort of a, uh, a herd mentality, a lemming-like mentality. If you don't go with the flow, you're anti-American and therefore a suspect. The Tony Jones Show, featuring punk, rockabilly, psychobilly, and Providence, Rhode Island's finest, starts right now. He's a dangerous militia member, I hear. Oh, and there she blows. <laughs> The time for mediocrity and broadcasting is over. My name is Tony Jones, and you are tuned in to the Tony Jones Show, your destination for talk and rock. Online at Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show. On the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. Be sure to check out RIFreeRadio.org. Be sure to check out TonyJones.org. And I once again apologize for I am freaking exhausted this week, but we will always uh, we'll make it through the program. A lot to talk about. We have some in-studio guests. I did a little uh, movie work last week. I was in the Polka King. I spent some time at the uh, Maximum Security Prison 
No word of a lie. We'll talk about that in uh, just a bit. And then I went to the sold-out viewing of the Tales of Rocky Point last night, and I was, I was able to kind of squeeze in at the last minute. Um, I was actually interviewed for the movie, but I didn't make the cut, as happens to me all the time. But uh, great film, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And Mike Worm in studio. We're going to be talking with him in just a little bit. But before that, let's get, uh, let's get back to the music. We're going to hear a double shot from 1031, who hopefully is going to be in studio in just a few weeks' time. We're working on that. We're in negotiations. Yes, heavy negotiations here to be on an internet radio station. <laughs> They'll be in studio with us uh, in just a few weeks' time. They have a big clip coming out and uh, a bunch of new music coming out. So here's uh, a double shot from 1031, starting with hands that feed you heard it here first on the tony jones show
Coming out of two from 1031 right here on the Tony Jones Show. We were never the track you just heard slash are hearing. And before that, I brought you into Hands That Feed. Yes, we're trying to get 1031 into this very studio to be on the Tony Jones Show. Online at TonyJones.org, Facebook.com slash the Tony Jones Show. On the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. Be sure to go to RI Free Radio. Dot org. Yes, you can be on this very program. Click on the contact page. And uh, before we get to my, our in-studio guests who have a big show coming up on August 27th at the Middle East in Cambridge. Cambridge, a far cry from West Warwick, where we are right now, <laughs> two polar opposite cities. Uh, so I was in the movie Polka King this past week and uh, starring Jack Black. Now, I'm told that... It's going to film in a prison, or it's going to be a prison scene, I should say. So I figure, you know, it's going to be a soundstage somewhere, and it's going to be made up like a prison. We'll have a prison scene. Now, when I say prison scene, get your, get your mind out of the gutter. It was nothing like that. No soap was dropped. Um, but uh-huh. it, <laughs> it was actually in maximum security at the ACI. We had to drop our IDs at the door, and I, was, I played a prisoner. Now, at first, I was hoping to play a guard. Uh, but I was cast as a prisoner. We literally went into a, a 85 to 90 degrees maximum security prison in full prison garb while the prisoners were in the hole and we filmed in the yard. Now, we had to hurry up because it was time for the prisoners to have the yard. But all I can think of is here I am with a couple day shave and you know a disheveled hair and dressed as a prisoner. All I'm thinking is somehow I get separated from the cast, and they're like, "No, no, come with me." You know, like, what am I going to say? Like, no, no, I'm not really a prisoner. I'm just here for the movie. Well, oh yeah, they're going to buy that. <laughs> I got to tell you, with with the the, the fresh, you know, like two day no shave, you, you are looking rather man pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had to drop your ID at the door, that would not be the worst thing you have dropped that day. <laughs> You know, you, you can infer whatever references I'm coming through, but uh, you know where I'm going. Not only did I play a prisoner, I played a basketball playing prisoner, which it, you guys should know. I have no, except for professional wrestling, no sports inclinations whatsoever. I'm like a bull in a friggin' china shop when it comes to anything to do with sports. And uh, I had to play a little b-ball. So I got to say... Jack Black is just what you would expect Jack Black to be, like the nicest guy. He was shaking hands with the prisoners, which I'm pretty sure he wasn't supposed to be doing, and uh, hanging out with the guards and stuff. But just uh, there was no, like, I'll be in my trailer, uh, you know, don't look the star directly in the eye. He was just uh, like a regular dude, you know, just like how you would expect Jack Black to act in person is, is how he was on the film. So I think it's, it's going to be out sometime next year. I don't really know the specifics, but I'm sure we'll talk about it here. And uh, let's get into our in-studio guests. I went, a little, uh, I went a little long on that, but we're pretty excited to have Mike Worm, and we're pretty excited to have Megan here. Who Let's talk about, let's work backwards and talk about the show that's coming up on August 27th, and you could just get as close to that microphone as possible. Is this close enough? That's perfect. I'm Mike. I'm here with Reckless Records, and I brought my friend Megan, who's here promoting her CD. Yep. Uh, I got the Blank 77s all the way from New Jersey. And the Parasitics from New Jersey that I booked next Saturday, 12 to 5, $10 in advance, 15 at the door at the Middle East Upstairs in Cambridge, Mass. It's their only New England show, and it's the first time they played in Boston in six years. Wow. So talk a little bit about, you are the proprietor, like that word, of Reckless Records. And you know something that we all hold near and dear to our hearts around here is... DIY, the DIY mentality, the DIY work ethic. So talk a little bit about Reckless Records and kind of being a DIY label. Uh, as a label I started for my band Bad Movies, I was shopping around trying to find a label to release it on and no one could get back to me. So I said, <laughs> fuck it and started right. my own. That's exactly how I approached Newbury Comics you know, with my own releases is saying, oh yeah, we're on a label. They had no reason to know that it was just a label that was out of my bedroom. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's in a the, label out of my basement. Exactly. In Somehow the, managed to make it all the way to Oregon. In so. the eyes of the world, we were on a label and therefore we could sell our stuff at uh, Newbury Comics. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about Worm and now... Worm has been around so long that you guys actually have a MySpace page. So yeah. if there's any younger, <laughs> uh, any younger folks out there listening, you probably don't even know what that is. But uh, around since 
2003, correct? Yep. Yeah, been all over the country with that band. You know, and I've kind of used that band to branch off with other bands and the label. So they're kind of the mothership of everything. You know, it's awesome when kind of one project spurs different things. We've seen that around here where a band will spur a label or it'll spur a podcast. Or who's the band we had in a few months ago and uh, the band members also do a podcast together? Um, I want to see Senior Discount. Yeah, Senior Discount. Senior Discount. And also, uh, doesn't 30 Silver have a uh, podcast yeah, going? Yeah, yep. That is, you know, that is the DIY mentality for uh, DIY or die. Do it yourself because no one else is going to help you. Our friend Johnny Earthquake uh, all turned us on to that back in the Woo-hoo. day. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right, let's swing back uh, into some music. We're going to hear from Vulgarity up next. This track is Middle Finger Machine Gun. You heard it here on the Tony Jones Show. <laughs>
Fuzzy and Wild, the name of that one, the ghastly ones right here on the Tony Jones Show. Before that, we heard from Vulgarity, Middle Finger Machine Gun, the name of that track. Tony Jones here, Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show, on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in R.I. Be sure to go to rifreeradio.org and tonyjones.org. Last night, I took in the premiere of Tales of Rocky Point, which was a documentary slash found footage film by our good friend Jason Mayo. I actually uh, recorded a part for the film. I didn't make the cut, uh, but our good friend Shuckles the Clown was featured throughout the film and just a a bunch of folks that you would know and recognize. And It's funny because I was just lamenting on one of the shows here the other day uh, talking about the new... uh, the new uh, movie that's coming out that is uh, another found footage film. I was just talking about how much I hated found footage films, and now I watched this found footage documentary the other night, and, uh, and it was awesome. <laughs> so I guess I'm kind of going to have to bite my tongue in uh, being premature in disrespecting different genres, but it was very cool to see, you know, of course, if you're a Rhode Islander or a New Englander growing up with Rocky Point. Uh, sad to see it in its demise towards the end, but it was cool that they were able to gain access to the grounds whether they did that legally or illegally i mean it looks like it was illegally i'm assuming it was at least somehow legally or maybe the statute of limitations are now up because it's uh you know was all filmed and all shown and uh seeing the kind of remnants of uh everything that was there really brought me back to just what a just such a such a different place you know the old cheesy song is you don't know what you got till it's gone i mean it's spending countless summers at rocky point you really never thought of it until it well went bankrupt and was was uh chained up up there and just kind of sitting there rotting and uh now it's a little public park type of thing but there was always uh it's true there was always some kind of glimmer of hope where you thought well maybe maybe someday something will happen and uh of course unfortunately it didn't happen and it's not gonna happen so it's time to move on but if you check out tales of rocky point dot com i uh, they have uh dvds up if you missed it last night It did sell out about 900 people in the house at the Park Cinema, and uh, well worth your time. I'm sure it'll be streaming pretty soon, and uh, well worth your time for... Don't get upset, don't get scared away by the term documentary, because it's not your typical, you know, four score and seven years ago documentary. This is uh, fantastic, and it's worth your time. But let's get back to our in-studio guests, again, talking about the big show coming up at the Middle East on August 27th. And uh, with Mike Worm is Megan, who has, if I believe correctly, uh, a new CD coming out? Yes, I just released my EP back in June. It's called Wolf Hour. I recorded it with Panama Quano Studios down in uh, Hanover, Mass. But um, it's my first record that I made. It's a lot of old folk, kind of crunchy hippie tunes. I'm pretty happy with it. And I got a show coming up at uh, Aeronaut Brewery up in Somerville on September 11th. I'm going to be with my friend Paul Yu playing up there. It's my first brewery show, so I'm pretty excited. I'm going to feel right at home surrounded by beer. So So we're getting some real-time feedback here. And uh, Jess wants to know when your album is going to come out and... uh Seen you, I guess she's seen you play a few times and uh, thinks you're awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Calls you a modern day Loretta Lynn. Oh my gosh. Talk about a compliment. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you could only see me blushing. <laughs> um, yeah, so the album is out. Um, I have it through kunaki.com. So that's K U N A K I. And if you search Megan Casey, which is M E A G H A N. C-A-S-E-Y. There's a little spelling lesson for you guys. <laughs> but um, that's up there. You can always find me. It's M-E-A-G Boston Music on Facebook. And you can always find me online. Shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to send out some CDs and some merch. The blessed world in which we live in, yes, we are all Googleable. So if there's oh, any, yes. any specific dates or times or names that you miss... Uh, we're all Googleable here, which <laughs> sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, I Suggested. Googled myself last night. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's get back down to the music now. We're going to hear a double shot from Electric Frankenstein 
one of my favorite bands out of New Jersey. We're going to start it off with Hammered right here on the Tony Jones Show.
Dark and Sinister Man, Have It Thee, the name of that one, a band that's been in this very studio. We just heard from 30 Silver right here on the Tony Jones Show. Before that, coming out of a double shot of Electric Frankenstein, last time we chatted, I brought you into Hammered. And then after that, we heard Perfect Crime. You are tuned in to the Tony Jones Show, Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show, on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in R.I. Be sure to go to rifreeradio.org and tonyjones.org. In studio with me, Mike Worm, who is getting some also Yo. getting some f- kind feedback. Mike Worm is the man. Caught a pretty rad show with Worm and the Mother Boys the other day. She says that was cool shit. Who is that? That was from Jess, who's coming in through our Spreka chat, which is actually... Uh, Tell her I'm calling her out that she's lying. <laughs> Sounds like a babe. He has honestly. no recollection of that. <laughs> <laughs> and Megan Casey's here, and I, I want to ask you guys, because I'm just always intrigued about how people get started in music and you know, just spending all this time and money and effort and this labor of love that we all do. But uh, how, did it all, how did it all start for you guys, respectively? Oh, I'm going first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um... Going to shows, saving my money and buying equipment, and starting a band. It's a long, tedious process <laughs> of hard work. <laughs> I think for me, I mean, I started playing violin when I was probably 11. I started playing guitar when I was 13. And I've always been a huge supporter of local music. Um, I actually did a lot of live music photography when I lived in Boston. I was published in the Phoenix a couple times. But, um... Did she used to go to punk shows, too? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she take I love all music. All music. I mean, it's funny. I was such a, you know, such a punk chick back in high school, and it's funny how I've transitioned into loving old country, because, I mean, you look at artists like Waylon Jennings, I mean, he was punk rock as hell. Um... And Hank you know. Williams. Oh, absolutely. See, now I gotta watch Willie myself because now I want to swear and get really excited. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm gonna behave. But absolutely, I mean, I think there's a huge parallel in that music, and I've I've just always loved live music. I've loved everything about it uh, ever since I can remember. So I'm very happy to have the opportunity to be an audience member, a photographer on stage, all of it. It's what I, it's my bread and butter. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't think a lot of folks realize that even if you're doing, you know, more of a punk rock thing, it is still uh, a mighty large layout financially and uh, a lot of hard work. That it is. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, you know, and we always Put try to shows, promoting, putting we, out records. We always try to support the folks that are... Uh, spending their summer this summer each and every summer uh on the road i just heard from uh our friends in uh michael graves and the michael graves band is heading back out after it seems like they just wrapped up a tour you know we played with them in may and uh they're already back out on the road for another two month i think tour all together yeah. full band it's gonna be insane for those guys uh, graves that's graves bread and butter yeah <laughs> i've seen him in about seven different states <laughs> Yeah, I saw him probably about a number of years ago, but it was over in Bridgewater, and I was doing photos, and that whole group of guys were so nice and welcoming, and I mean, that's what it's all about, is supporting each other and just loving what we do. And he absolutely blew the roof off of Firehouse 13, full house, and it was a uh, a Sunday night, and it had to be about 195 degrees (laughs) inside of Firehouse 13, and... uh, Sticky, uncomfortable, but still just uh, just nailed it in a you know on an off night show in a venue that's a million degrees. I mean that's a true sign. I have to say I love that venue. John and Winsong are amazing people. I love every opportunity I get to play there. Yeah, talk about people who actually you know care about what they're doing as opposed yes. to being the typical greedy club owner that's uh, in the back counting their money at the end of the <laughs> night. Yeah. If you go to Firehouse Thirteen, if you get there early enough. You'll see John, the owner, literally scrubbing the toilets and like getting the club ready for the night, like mopping the floor and stuff like that. They're it's, the it's best awesome. people. Yeah. 
Let's hear from uh, another one of our favorite local bands as the Tony Jones Show wind da- winds down. We're going to hear from Sex Coffee up next. This track is Inside of Me. You heard it here on the Tony Jones Show. One of our favorites around here. You just heard from Sex Coffee right here on the Tony Jones Show. Inside of me, the name of that one. And unfortunately, we are 
just about out of time. So I, I, what I'll do is before we talk about the show one more time, I'm going to open the floor to my in-studio guests. Yes, they will have a chance to address you, my luxurious audience, on just about anything that they want to mention, anything that we missed, any projects coming up, any new releases coming up, uh, how do folks reach you, all that good stuff. So what do you think? Next Saturday, August 27th, 12 to 5 p.m. at the Middle East Upstairs in Cambridge, all ages show. Bring your kids. There'll be Nerf guns there <laughs> and all kids. types of shit. <laughs> the Blank 77s, the Parasitics, all the way from New Jersey. Their first show in six years in Boston. And the Blank's first show in New England in probably about three or four. And the only one. Um, also, Opposition Rising from Boston. The Murder from Boston. Destroy and Moose Knuckle will be on the bill. Come up. Day drink with the Blank 77s. They're a cool band to see and an even cooler band to party with. My name is Megan Casey. You can find me on Facebook. That's M E A G Boston Music. I got a show coming up at Aeronaut Brewery in Somerville on September 11th. I'll also be playing tomorrow at the Marshfield Fair, which is really funny to me because I religiously <laughs> went to all those Battle of the Bands and I was just invited by John Shea at 95.9 WATD. But um, you can find me on Facebook. I got my EP Wolf Hour out. Come and say hey. Shoot me a message. I'd love to meet you guys. I think at the uh, fair is you know something very near and dear to DJ Psycho Eddie and my heart is I think you can get a stick of fried butter there. Oh right, my butter. gosh! <laughs> Anything covered in cotton candy? Sugar. My heart <laughs> just skipped a beat. Oh my yeah, god! I, I can keep going on with the friolated arts, but uh, I'll digress. <laughs> <laughs> my heart skipping beats right now. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so is mine, but the defibrillator is going to kick in any second. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys again. Thank you so much. Don't Reckless forget. Records on Facebook. Check out my band's Worm, Bad Movies, and The Mother Boys. And also check out Worm on MySpace. <laughs> on MySpace, <laughs> yep. Punkrockers.com, Reverb Nation, Bandcamp, all that good shit. Don't forget to check out Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in RI. And, of course, if you go to TonyJones.org or RIFreeRadio.org, click on the contact page and uh, come see us sometime. Of course, we do update our streaming music each and every week so if you have new music coming out be sure to get it to us and uh tony jones and the cretan three as well tony jones and the cretan three we need a drummer and we need a drummer that is willing to leave the house on the regular basis so if there's any out there listening <laughs> be sure to drop me a line at that <laughs> we're gonna leave here with two from the nymphadels up next starting off with anchor thank you for tuning in and hanging out bye everybody bye cheers <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Welcome, my night out. It's DJ Psycho Eddie here. That was 30 Silver. The name of the song was Goat. Hey, we have guests this week. That's right. We have Megan Casey. She Hello. just released her, her EP, uh, Wolf Hour. Yes. And we also have Mike Worm from Reckless Records. And uh, we will be talking with these guys very shortly. However, uh, as always, I got to tell you. Uh, how to get first? How to get in touch with us? I have to stop saying "ah." By the way, <laughs> uh, I get uh. fined by every time I say "ah" and every time I say a curse word. Uh, <laughs> Tony is going to take a vacation on the amount of uh, "ahs" and every time you say "ah," you have to buy a six pack and stock the fridge here. <laughs> <laughs> we need a bigger fridge. I'm going to puke. Uh, well, I'm just coming off a show that was basically everyone said was never going to happen. It it. It was just amazing. Bands that haven't played together 8, 10, 15 years, uh, they got together last night at the Met. Uh, Kilgore Smudge. We had Shed, State of Corruption, and Times Expired. They got together. Now, all together, the, the, the bands were just amazing. But the love and everything that was going on be, you know, between the sets, helping everyone, helping each other out, even through equipment malfunctions, things just weren't working for a couple of the bands, and they still powered through it. And it, it just turned out, we even we even had a fire alarm go off. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just oh, no. as Kilgore was starting their set, they did their full intro, which was the Flight of the Valkyries. I know because I had to play it. And <laughs> as soon as that ended, and they were just ready to strike a chord... Fire alarm goes off. <laughs> Everybody out of the pool. Oh, and, man. you know, it was great. I mean, everyone went outside. You cooled off a little bit because there were close to 450 people wow. in the Met. They, they, if you ever want to hear the term or see the term butt to nut, <laughs> <laughs> this is what it was. Uh, Gig. <laughs> the, the show itself, like, I can't say enough about it. It was amazing. I am so honored. To have been asked to do this for Joe Moody, as you, everyone knows, Joe Moody passed away uh, a few months ago now, and um, they they did one event over at Firehouse 13. Last night was, was the big event, and I mean, people flew in from Brussels wow. just to play this show. Um, the guitarist from Kilgore flew in from Brussels the night before to play that show. Wow. It was absolutely amazing. I had a blast. But enough about why I'm a mess. <laughs> let, let's uh, let, let's talk about why I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other half of the show. If you haven't figured that out now, we're 50 whatever episodes in. Uh, if you don't know, I like to eat. Um, Something wrong with that. Oh, we got Pizza Hut. <laughs> I know. I got you guys had Pizza Hut on the way in, and this is why Tony hates doing this show <laughs> at 5 o'clock on, on a Sunday because he hasn't had dinner yet. Um, <laughs> first off, I, I did... Uh, a small gig, a, a wedding anniversary, something like that. I, I don't remember. I was drinking. However, <laughs> uh, I was in Fall River. When you're in Fall River, if you want to eat, you're going to get Portuguese food because that's all they have. Oh, yum. <laughs> so I went to two different places because I had a meeting on, I think it was Wednesday. Wednesday, I went to the Fall River Grill. The food was amazing. I, I killed a bottle of wine with dinner by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my dinner. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, shrimp Mozambique is is the dish you have to if you order anything for an appetizer, shrimp Mozambique, and you have like a loaf and a half of bread to just to <laughs> soak up all the juice. It's amazing. Mm. Uh, then the day of the sh the actual anniversary or whatever it was, uh, I went to this place called Estero. Again, shrimp Mozambique was the the, the go to dish. But at each place, you know, the main course, I had a seafood pie at Estro, which basically fish, scallops, shrimp. If, if, it, if it swims, it, it was in this dish. A little bit of bread. <laughs> little, oh, my God. It was absolutely amazing. Oof. And that's just two of the meals. I got a whole bunch of places that I went to. Um, hmm. In fact, I like Full River Grill so much. I, the, the show was on a Saturday. Sunday, I went back to Fall River <laughs> <laughs> just because I had to take my parents out for, for dinner. And that's, you know, we went out to back to Fall River Grill. 
Perfect. And I, I heard they're almost done with the construction on the Braga Bridge. Just uh, <laughs> a little bit more left. Now, I, re- I remember going on a field trip to Battleship Cove, being maybe 10 years old in the Boy Scouts. And they, they were working on the Braga Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 35. They're working on the Braga Bridge. <laughs> well, you see, when they finish it, they, they go from left to right. When they get to the right, it's taking them so long to go back to the, where they started off <laughs> and just do it again. Do you know what color they're going to paint it? Silva. But getting a little closer to home, there's a a pizza place. It just opened. Well, it's been around for a little while now, a couple of months. It's called Donahue's Pizza. It is. uh, I'll give you the Rhode Island directions. It's the old (laughs) Kingston Pizza in West Warwick. Okay. Now I am not what you would call a salad kind of (laughs) guy. I I like. In fact, you don't win friends with salad. You don't win friends <laughs> with salad. However, I've ordered the Greek salad and the tuna salad so many times in the last three weeks. I, I, I'm actually considering, go, if, if that's all I had to eat, I, I would be okay with that. <laughs> uh, Donahue's Pizza, it's, um, I don't even know the address. I, I was so unprepared. It, this Google is the it. radio version of having your pants around your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, you know, uh, take the bike out. Uh, I had to hit my favorite place uh, up in the northern corner of Rhode Island, the Pasco Cafe. Only place I know. You, you're smiling. You've been oh, there. Oh, I am smiling. You? I've been there once. Okay. Only once. But it was amazing. Do you remember leaving? Uh, no. Then you, well, you've had the full experience then. <laughs> That's a typical theme in uh, me visiting yeah, certain I, restaurants and bars. <laughs> well, that's why I take my motorcycle everywhere, because I know in the back of my head ain't nobody driving my vehicle home, and I'm, <laughs> I am not getting on the back of my own motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I rein it in a little. But the Pasco Cafe is the only place I know of where you can get burger, fries, and a beer for under six dollars. Oh wow! It's I want to go there. <laughs> Five ninety nine. Granted, it's only a penny, but it is <clears throat> under six dollars, and the burger kicks ass. Wow! I mean, it, it's you could tell good size burger. It, well, it, it's about an eight ounce burger, about a half pound burger. Yeah. Um, but when they when they do it, you could tell it. You know, they just formed that right before they threw it on the grill. It wasn't some frozen, you know, big yo- big white box fresh yeah. burger. This is some fresh and. I have onions, tomatoes, whatever else oh, on yeah. it. And you could just tell. You could taste the freshness. It was amazing. And then after about a dozen or so beers, you, you <laughs> go on to the next spot. <laughs> I'm only being a little facetious there. I wasn't a dozen. It was only ten at best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, by the way, Tony, I, I got to ask, did that work out for you, the uh, – so I lost track of your playlist. However, I was able to. You were able to bring. I it was up. able to pull out some music from our in-studio guests, but I uh, okay. wasn't sure if. So, so which thumb drive do you have? And uh, we will t- we'll tell you what we're, music we're going to cut to in, in a minute. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I have your playlist back. I just don't have the order anymore. Oh, it's okay. Um, if you have their music up. That I don't yet because no? I wasn't sure what to. Uh, you know, okay. if they had any preferences. All right. Well, why don't we um, why don't we cut to one of mine, uh, the Kilgore, who was uh, absolutely awesome set last night. Do therapy from Kilgore. Sound good? Sure. Okay. This is uh, this is going to be uh, Kilgore therapy. Uh, that you're listening to my night out radio, and we'll be back in a minute.
Kilgore, name of the song is Therapy. Awesome set last night. I know a few of you guys are listening. Uh, it, like I said, it was an honor to be uh, asked to do that show. Speaking of shows, however, Mike Worm, he Stop. is in studio. He has a show next Saturday, the 27th of August. Tell mm-hmm. me about it. The Middle East Upstairs, next Saturday, 12 to 5, all ages, bring your kids. There'll be Nerf guns and a bunch of shenanigans going on. Well, first off, the Nerf guns, you're hitting a sweet spot with me. Cause <laughs> you, no, you've got to keep people occupied in between the bands and whatever. Well, of course, this is where I usually make my money and stuff. So <laughs> if you don't have a DJ, you've got to keep people occupied. Yeah. So if you give like... You know, I, I got, go to shows where they have dunk tanks and all sorts of weird crap. We were thinking of pogo sticks, but we pogo didn't stick. think the, the club <laughs> oh would go the <laughs> over with that. <laughs> yeah, so those can be used as weapons. So either that, if someone's drinking, gets on the pogo stick and takes out the front row of teeth, and that, yeah. that could be a negative. It's like the cover of Blank 77's album. <laughs> Which, by the way, is playing. The, the headline is from New Jersey, their first show in Boston in six years. They're bringing the Parasitics, who they put out a split called Getting Blasted a couple months back on Jailhouse Records. So I brought them up. And then the Boston headline is we got an opposition rising who just got back from a Midwest tour. And the Murder, who's doing their first show in five years. Wow. And we got Destroy and Moose Knuckle opening up. Well, I'm going to backtrack a little with you now. Now, you're at the level now where you've already toured. Yes. You, with your band, Worm. My band, Worm, we, t- we did a cross-country tour last year, the biggest tour we had done in 13 years. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring you all the way back. How did you get started? Or what are some of your influences that got you to say, hey, maybe I should pick up an instrument and start playing? Going to punk shows around the South Shore of Massachusetts, seeing bands from the city come through. I had no idea how to, I bought a guitar, I had no idea how to play, and no idea how to sing, still really don't, but, <laughs> and I just started a band, and it's the same band, it's the same band, same band, so different people, but, now you guys have been together for a while, yes, when did you start, 2003 was when we started wearing, I think I was a senior in high school, okay, 2003, senior in high school, you get this band together, and you know where did you start? How did you start? Oh, did, did anyone want to take a chance on the you know bunch of high school kids to play play music? Or we played mostly halls and basements and auditoriums, and then we played some big shows. We played with Michael Graves of the Misfits. We've played with Jerry Only's version of the Misfits. <laughs> um, we played with the Freeze. We've played with 
Opposition Rising. We saw a ton of ton of bands from all over the country. So you guys are pretty well versed in, in working out with other bands and you know, you got that brotherhood going on when you're on the road, right? Yep. You take care of people when they come through and they'll take care of you when you're out on tour. Exactly. It's the DIY mentality. Take care of your friends on well, tour. That's where I'll I was take going care of you this. when you go on tour. The word segue doesn't even comprehend what we've got going on. You know, <laughs> we're just feeding each other right now. Uh, which you said the DIY, which is Reckless Records. Reckless Records, yeah. Reckless Rec Records is what it's written right here. Reckless Records. Say it like it's French. <laughs> <laughs> records. <Sacramento>. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I have to be honest with you. I took a piece of steel to the eye a couple weeks ago, Ooh. and I can barely read what you have written down over here. So, Reckless Records and uh, Vivid. Yeah, Vivid, show. Vivid helped us get the venue and uh, with the ticket, online ticket sales. Okay. She's great. Vivian's she, awesome. Vivian yeah. from Vivid is yep. awesome. She has Megan Casey's seal of approval, which <laughs> another segue. That's a tough approval. Oh I know. <laughs> we're, we're segueing right into Megan Casey and her new CD, The yes. Wolf Hour. Oh, sorry. Wolf Hour. Yes. Tell me about it. <clears throat> So I, <clears throat> I recorded this uh, in my friend's garage, actually, through what were, he's starting as Panama Quano Studios. And I, I've been playing for a while, and I just wanted to get my EP and a couple songs out there. And he was really great throughout the whole process. It's um, some banjo and guitar, crunchy, folky country punky kind of stuff going on so pretty happy about it cross between punk rock music and, and um granola crunch and hippies right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit yeah <laughs> i mean it's kind of weird like i draw inspiration from waylon jennings loretta lynn to you know brody dale was a huge influence of mine and the distillers and you know i listen to everything but it's kind of a combination of everything i've listened to throughout the years now, on, on the Tony Jones show, we had live, up-to-the-minute response from people. Uh, however, Jess will not be able to <laughs> respond to this one. Sorry, Jess. Uh, oh, I don't look bad. at my screen all that much unless love I'm you. looking for notes. But we love you anyways, <laughs> and thank you for listening. Um, i got to say, bringing artists in is very difficult because some of them, well, they'll... they'll They'll have their friends, you know, oh, hey, make sure you call in and make sure you send messages. I don't like doing that because, you know, for every two or three friends that you're going to have coming in, you may or may not be as good as they're putting out. So I, I like to take you guys at face value. For sure. And definitely tell people, well, like with your CD, how if I wanted to get that CD, how would I do that? You can find me on Facebook at M-E-A-G Boston Music. You can also find me on Kunaki. That's K-U-N-A-K-I dot com. You can search Megan Casey. It's a spelling lesson for you guys. It's M-E-A-G-H-A-N-C-A-S-E-Y. Um, but you can Google me. I'm sure I'm in the interwebs. I would be more than happy to send you a copy. It's $5. $5 for a That's actually... Pretty much most of the CDs you're getting now, you know, if for a physical CD, five bucks is not pro not bad at all. Um, I gotta say, I did pick up, brace yourself, a cassette. Cassettes <laughs> <laughs> are awesome. Oh, the where <laughs> finest cobalt cassette out there. Uh, I, I was actually last night. Kilgore actually put made out a <laughs> hundred cobalt tape CD um, cassettes. And nice. we're selling them last night, and I happened to get one I'm of them. I'm starting to see that a lot with bands now. That they're, they're putting out cassettes. Cassettes. As, as they've vinyl. always put out vinyl and yeah. Yeah. CDs. Now, but. my question is, and, and maybe you guys could help me, because you know, I've got thousands of dollars of DJ equipment. Where the hell do I get a tape player? Savers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you're so Our broke flea market. that you're still driving a car that has a cassette player, you're really going to appreciate the fact that you can get new music in cassette form. Well, that, that's the other problem. If you're driving a car that old and beat up, 
um, chances are you're not going to be able to afford the 5 or $10 <laughs> for the cassette. Or you're going to need a cassette to listen to while AAA is coming out to wherever yeah. you're broken down. Well, I was going to say my old Jeep had a cassette player, and I just got a RAV4, and I was actually pretty upset because I had everything from Misfits, Letters to Cleo, to Jackson 5 when I'm in a certain kind of mood. But... <laughs> A certain kind of mood. Yeah. She's smiling. <laughs> that might, that might include that. Uh, some substances that probably shouldn't be talked about on the radio waves. But uh, Well, luckily this is internet radio. <laughs> oh, so, perfect. So you can chat about that. In fact, uh, on our iFree radio, there is a, a entire show based solely on that. Uh, I believe you're referring to the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> and that is probably the only time I will actually listen to the Jackson 5. And I'll probably turn on some toxic narcotic and get back to my wavelength. But Alrighty. <laughs> well, uh, no, well gonna... you, need, you need marijuana to think about the fact that Joe Jackson just beating the oh, crap God. out of those kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sing more. <laughs> what? Candy girl? Hit a wrong Wait, note. You, <laughs> you got that wrong. Do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna beat. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you oh, to your resemble a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, no. I'm going to the hell. The truth sometimes <laughs> is stranger than fiction. <laughs> well, you had gone over during the break to pick out a song to play. Tell us what song we're gonna play. Uh, I guess we're doing a worm song, and it's called "Girls in the Mosh Pit." All right, so it's Worm, Girls in the Mosh Pit. You're listening to My Night Out Radio, and we'll be back in a minute.
All right, my night outers. That was Shed. Name of the song was Mosaic, I believe, because we lost track of, well, the playlist. Uh, before that, we heard Worm, Girls in the Mosh Pit. Now, I did have to cut short my, my dining exploits for the last two, three <laughs> weeks because... Well, I could see Tony salivating from here. It's Summer Slams tonight, and I'm I'm oh, gonna yeah. eat, I'm gonna eat like twelve pizzas. Well, <laughs> every time someone gets body slammed, I'm gonna eat a, a whole pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, uh, and this is personal experience. Uh, on your way home, you are going to want to pick up an everything sandwich at Donahue's Pizza. Now, Donahue's, like I said, is right around the corner from here. Not even a half mile down the road. They literally put two kinds of sausage, meatball and, and, and pepperoni, and, and this thing, literally, oh you, need, you need to hook yourself up to a defibrillator <laughs> before you eat it. But it is so good. You, do the, you know the, the hunch where you like lean over so you don't get anything on your shirt while your, you eat it? Your waiter is also a cardiologist. <laughs> yes. Your waiter's name is going to be Pete, and he is licensed in uh, defibrillation. Uh, also, we want to talk about bad for your arteries, but oh, so good. I went to Jell's Diner. Oh, yeah. Now, if you guys aren't from around here, you guys are from up in Mass, so uh, I'll... I'll give you. Fill me in. Uh, you need <laughs> it, literally the opposite direction, yeah. not even a half mile. Gel's Diner. They have the hot wiener omelet. <laughs> Sounds but, like my kind of omelet. But, oh, <laughs> well, as we discussed off the air, I was your first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And, and yeah, if you guys want to know more about that, I'm not telling because I'm a gentleman. Anyways. First radio show, okay? <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter. See? <laughs> Anyways, I, we've had the hot wiener omelet. We've reviewed the hot wiener omelet. <laughs> but they get even better. They have the Italian grinder omelet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, what is that? <laughs> See, morbid curiosity <laughs> is what you, <laughs> you can't make this up. When I, when I look at a menu, I, you know, morbid curiosity, if something piques my interest, that's what I got to get. I don't care if it's deep fried spam with a chocolate sauce. I got to try it. <laughs> However, gels, the Italian grinder omelet. Good God. You have salami. Well, if you're from Rhode Island, it's gabagol. If you're from anywhere else in the world, it's capicola. Uh, (laughs) Ham, hot ham, and hot pepper rings with cheese in an omelet. (laughs) Oh, my. It it sounds so wrong, but, oh, it is so right. (laughs) I mean, you, I cannot tell you enough at how good this was. Granted, the after effects later on during the day you yeah. know, may not have been so, <laughs> so pleasant. And, of course, I'm saying this while I'm watching uh, Mike eat a piece of pizza. And, um, oh my you God. know it's a good breakfast when you have to bring a change of underwear. <laughs> uh, but that, that's, you know, that, that was something. I, I missed it before, and I just had to bring it out because... You know, it gels every time is, I go there. It, is that a new addition to their menu, or is that a it was a new? It was on the specials board, which hopefully comes part of the menu. Also, I saw the witch doctor yesterday on my way up to the show. See, you guys don't know who I'm talking about. That's how I know you're from, not from Rhode Island. <laughs> Jason Wu, Doctor J Wu. He is the bartender at the House of Wu. He can make a scorpion bowl that can cripple a normal man. I know because he's crippled me several times. I'll take that challenge. You run out of gas in the parking lot. You just pour the scorpion bowl directly into your gas tank. So now I have a a roadie that helps me out a lot. He's also my nephew, thank God, so I don't have to pay him as much. He's 19 years old. He goes to the University of Maine. Uh, I I would root for the – I have no idea what their mascot is. So University of Maine in Bangor, I don't know. (laughs) However, I had to feed him. He is a big guy. He plays rugby for University of Maine. He's oh, tall. Yeah. I look him square in the nipples, and I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", <laughs> five, depending on which convenience store you just robbed. However, <laughs> so i got to feed this kid who is basically a bottomless pit. We go to the house of Wu, and Dr. Wu takes care of us. We, we get our food. I, I swear to God, they have a psychic in the back that starts cooking <laughs> as you pull up. Because, <laughs> I mean, you order it within minutes. Food is on right there in front of you. 
Your drinks, if you're ordering drinks, are flammable. and As they should be. Oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I literally fed him, myself, drinks, and everything came to like 25, 30 bucks. Really? Yeah. Drinks. Oh, my bucks. God. It, 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 this is one of those places where you feel like you're robbing them when you pay the bill. <laughs> oh, wow. So th- this is part of the reason why I tip so big because like, I think they did the math wrong. And like, All right, just give them yeah. extra money and in case he screws <laughs> up. They're a p- place, too. I mean, I've probably been going there 20, 25 years, and I I've n- don't think their menu prices have changed in that whole time. Well, the menu hasn't changed. Uh, actually, no, there, there have been maybe three editions that I can think of within the last 10 to 15 years. But, yeah, no, they, they still have the same carpet. I mean, the yeah. carpet, you couldn't rake it up on a bet. <laughs> it, it's to the point where you just have to squeegee the carpet. It, it, it's yeah. just, but they, you don't want them to close down to change the carpet because you're going to be missing out on the scorpion yeah. bowls and the food. It, it's... <laughs> You know, it, it's one of those catch twenty twos. If they do, if they do closing down for a couple of days to do the renovations, they don't have the client. Or they they're going to pick the days that they're not going to have the clientele. But there's always people in there. The bar yeah. is packed nonstop. Oh wow, that's a good sign. Always. Uh, and, and again, I'm not going to give you the address. I'm not even going to attempt the address <laughs> because I just don't care to bring it up on the computer. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> We've covered quite a few things at that segment right there. I'm hungry now. You're hungry now? Yeah. This is a common, common problem we have at this. <laughs> you're going to leave here. You're going to want to go back to Papa Gino's or wherever you went for your pizza and, and get it more. I want to try some of the places. Well, no, yeah. Are you kidding me? Well, screw. Well, I probably shouldn't say that on air, but screw pizza place. <laughs> well, you see, there, there's that, there, a common theme every time I go anywhere. If it's a chain, you will not see me in it. With the exception of Doherty's. Doherty's, mm-hmm. uh, there's one down here. It's basically, it's tapped restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have about 100 beers on tap. Oh, wow. I'm working my way through the menu quickly <laughs> because they rotate the menu as well. Oh, no shit. And the food there is amazing, which is another stop I made, which we, you know we could talk about off the air because I'm pretty sure everyone is like <laughs> ready to run to the, the can I Can I tell you a quick pizza-related story? Uh, you know, normally if it's a negative review we don't really talk about it here but i was coming back from park theater in cranston last night and there's a well-known chain that has hot and ready pizzas so i gotta go from one thing to another and i think to myself i'm gonna pop in here i'm gonna get a hot and ready pizza i'm gonna get a diet coke i'll be set for the night so i walk in and the place was open literally nobody was in the restaurant so i get my you know diet coke and i'm waiting to check out and have my hot and ready pizza and nobody's around nobody's around I kind of yell in the back, you know, you know, you guys open, nobody's, literally, I waited for maybe 10 minutes total, nobody was in this restaurant. Now, having worked <laughs> hospitality, all I can think of is the person quit and just like left for the day, but yeah, there was nobody in this restaurant. Did, did you at least take the Diet Coke with you? You know, if I had cash on me, I would have went back there and got my pizza, got my Diet Coke and left, you know, cash on the table, but unfortunately I didn't, so I just bailed. Now that that I would actually filed under, you know, you're not going to wait on me. The the soda is mine. But I, when I say there was no, sure. like, not only was there nobody in there, there was. I mean, the place was open, but there was no cars in the parking lot, no sign <laughs> of staff, no sign of a delivery driver, just uh, just abandoned shop, just a fro, yeah, just a like a pizza place frozen in time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we take a break here because now now I'm getting kind of thirsty, which is kind of weird. But anyways, me too. Um, uh, is is a band that I've actually worked with. Well, I, I've worked with the lead singer, um, Lilith Lilith, Lilith Astaroth. Wow, I can't say that very well right now. <laughs> I'm working on that, however. And we usually play Divine Submission because that was the only track I had up until today. Uh, I, I got new uh, new Sorrow Seed. Uh, the name of the song is Arcana of the Lich Lich Queen. Okay, we'll go with that. Arcana sure. from Sorrow Seed. Uh, we'll be back in a minute.
What you need me to do, I'll go on right ahead. Call me sin and I will be your girl. Well, I can never lose you, cause I'll be losing me too. Do the devil's work and I'll do it for free As long as you can always love a girl like me Call me Sid and I've been waiting for you to Tempt and desire so it's just a brush of fire Well don't be scared Do I will go on right ahead Call me sin and I will be all yours Well I can never lose you Cause I'll be losing me too Well I can never lose you Cause I'll be losing all right, that was A Girl Named Sin. That was off of Megan Casey's new CD, new EP that just released what, a couple days ago? Um, back in June, but in uh, June. Right, it's been mounting around, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, it's called Wolf Hour. Now, if someone wanted to pick that up, how would they do that? So they can find me on Facebook, um, M-E-A-G, that's Meg. Boston Music. You can also find me on Kunaki. That's K U N A K I dot com. You can search Megan Casey spelling lesson M E A G H A N C A S E Y. Okay. And now, Mike, your show is next week at the Middle East, Middle upstairs. East upstairs, noon to five p.m. Now, who's playing again? All ages. Five, ten dollars in advance. Fifteen at the door with the blank seventy sevens. The Parasitics, Opposition Rising, The Murder, Moose Knuckle, and Destroy. Okay. Now, I also have a show on the 27th, so unfortunately I won't be able to go to yours. But I will be at the second installment of The Big Kahuna at FET. Three stages, 30 bands. Oh, wow. Cobra Kai what? is headlining, which is Anthrax and Shadows Fall. Their bands got together, and they made a, a super group, or whatever you want to call it. Now, I also have to bring to everyone's attention because, well, hell, this is how we make our bread and butter. We're doing a fundraiser, but we're also doing the Rhode Island Free Anniversary. Try this again. <laughs> Rhode Island Free Radio Anniversary Party, September 4th Woo. at the Rocky Point Clam Shack. Uh, post is it a clam bake? In, no, it, it is a full – do you – again, you're not from Rhode Island. I forget this. <laughs> Rocky Point was an amusement park. They used to have the Rocky Point Chowder House, or, yes. or they had, you know what I'm talking about? I they, know what you're talking about. They, they had the uh, a hall, a dining hall, and basically clam cakes, chowder, fish and chips, and, and, and what have you. And when Rocky Point closed, that closed. There was the Rocky Point Clam Shack for a little while. Now it is the Rocky Point Clam Shack on Post Road, uh, right in front of the Inn and Hope, uh, right down the street from the airport. Again, I'm giving you Rhode Island directions. If you look it up <laughs> on the internet, you can probably find it a lot easier. But we have uh, some stellar acoustic sets. Uh, I, I know for a fact uh, Eric and Ben from Most Dangerous Men Alive. Then we also have, uh, what's his name, Rob, uh, Rob Dumont. Tony, you got to help me on this. 
I'm uh, well, floundering. I, I would love to help you, except <laughs> you're the one that booked the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, uh, my guitar player, Sean, is perfect for that. What he'll do is he'll book a show. And forget. And th- and no, and then he'll say, well, what's the details on that show? And I'm like, I don't know. You booked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Rob Dumont, uh, he was in Sex Coffee. What's he in now? The bands. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> it, it's a horrible, horrible. I saw him last night, too. Uh, anyways, Rob Dumont's going to be there. And you actually did book one of the acts that's going to be playing. Brian Brain Kerbal, who is the, speaking of Big Kahuna Festival, he is the Tiki Man. He has a seven-foot Tiki costume. <laughs> also, he plays uh, acoustic. He plays ukulele. So, it's, you know, Woo. it's going to be great, uh, great summertime music with uh, Brian. And, of course, in between the bands, I will be DJing, or at least I'll have a playlist set up of Family Friendly. This is a Family Friendly event. Uh, because it, has, it is at the Clam Shack, we have to keep it Family Friendly. Uh, PG-13 at most and there will be discounts on the food so come down uh, not, not only did I get them to agree to a, just a regular discount for us however also I agreed I really put the uh, screws to them and I got a 50% off discount if you're having the classic Rocky Point chowder and clam cakes combo because I know there's a lot of folks down there that are just very nostalgic for Rocky Point so yeah half off if you're getting Woo-hoo. the chowder and clam cakes so you know the food it's well worth it. I, you know, I, I actually stopped there. Of course, don't tell my wife this, but I did <laughs> stop in there not that long ago. Now, I will make one full disclosure to everybody listening. Please do not feed the seagulls. I don't know where these things come from, but if you throw one clam cake out there, you won't see a seagull in sight, and all of a sudden there'll be like 50. It's like Hitchcock's The Birds, but with seagulls. <laughs> it's nuts. Uh, well, that, that's one thing to, to take note of. Thank you uh, for sharing that. Um, also, coming up, I believe it's sometime in October. We do not have any definite dates as of yet, but the George Garner Bachelor Party is coming up. That's going to be nuts. Yeah. Uh, ba- basically, it's going to be a free show. Everyone just show up. I, 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 we don't even know where it's going to be yet. Uh, we're just keeping you posted that there's a bachelor party coming up, and... And George does not want strip clubs. He doesn't want naked women, despite what everyone else has been trying to tell him, <laughs> namely me. Come on. Now, I need to, you all to keep in mind why we need to celebrate this. George Garner, who is in his early to mid-50s. Uh, fifth time around being a teenager. This is not his second marriage, his third marriage, his fourth marriage, anything like that, like most people in their 50s. This is his first marriage. So he, he finally found the right one. I mean, Aww. talk about dodging the bullet for so long. <laughs> uh. So anyways, George, when it happens, we will, we will definitely post it up here. We will let everybody know, and we will make this thing the bond burner blowout that it should be for, for surviving single <laughs> life as long as you have. So, I, I mean, there's nothing else I, I can say about that. Uh, i, I got to thank Mike. And Megan for coming down tonight. You guys, Thank you. we've had Thank a blast. You for having us. Um, we did a little damage to that bottle of uh, Menage a Trois. Menage a Trois, citrus, <laughs> citrus. vodka, <laughs> which, which is part of the reason why I needed Tony to be my crutch to get through the. Uh, <laughs> you need a, you need a ride home. <laughs> no, fortunately, I have a ride coming. Uh, Me too. <laughs> we're gonna leave here. You know what? Let's do one more from Kilgore. Woo. Uh, Kilgore, like I said, these guys killed it. And, and here's a little fact. The original lineup for Kilgore, I, I went to high school with every single one of them. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Now, here's even more disturbing. It was a Catholic high school. <laughs> it just explains Perfect. why you're all so twisted. <laughs> <laughs> so the name of this song is Half Empty. By the way, um, I did forget to do this, and I have to do this right now. Uh, if you want to get in touch, if you want to be on the show, mynightoutradio at verizon.net. Send me an email. Also, if you want to get some music on the air, mynightoutradio at verizon.net is the email you want to go to. Facebook forward slash mynightout, mynightoutri.com. Definitely send me a link. Send me your music. I will get it up on the air as long as it is radio friendly. Remember, we have to keep it about PG-13 level. So without further ado, Kilgore, the name of the song, Half Empty. Thank you, Ed, and have a good night, everybody. Woo-woo.
sense Putting dreams much to you Only I wish to come see you Well, that's used to show up.